I did a video protecting the good name of Lubavitch and the Lubavitch emissaries and the Lubavitch Chassidim. And I was attacked for it by some. I'm sure that they are well-meaning, but they're ill-informed people. And uh, we got into words and discussions that were heated and emotional. And really, I felt along the way that this was inappropriate. The reason why it was inappropriate is because there is, besides our own mind, there is the das of the great, of the great Torah leaders, the Torah sages of the world. And they have a different perspective as to what is important. To most of us, survival is paramount, and that the survival of the Jewish people requires a, a good defense, uh, Haganah, Lechi, Etzel, but to the perception of the Torah leader, the defense of the Jewish people comes from the study of Torah, especially the study of Torah with young children. I had occasion to meet one of the greatest Jews of today. I consider him one of the greatest Jews of today, even though ideologically I disagree with a lot of the things that he stands for. But he is one of the greatest Jews of today, Professor Ephraim Zurov. One of his fields of expertise is what happened during the Holocaust, and he's dedicated his life to pursuing the Nazis who brutalized killed, maimed, destroyed, robbed, pillaged in every f conceivable form to make sure that whoever he can get his hands on would come to justice. Dr. Zurov has been very critical of the Torah leadership in America for focusing a lot of their assistance to sustaining the yeshivas and the rabbis whom they saved out of Europe, especially those who were in Shanghai, Kobe, later Shanghai, and in other places in Central Asia. And I thought about the criticism. I shared some of the criticism. Um, but then I started thinking. We're criticizing, we're trying to criticize great men the time of great danger to Klal Yisrael, to the Jewish people. What is the most important element that will protect Klal Yisrael? Two things. Tzedakah, charity, and the study of Torah, especially the pure study of Torah from the mouths of babes, from the mouths of children. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe dedicated his life when he came to America, to saving the children. And his example of self-sacrifice, he took his best and brightest yeshiva students and sent them to cities in Worcester, Boston, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, New Haven, sent them there to establish yeshivas to rescue Jewish children from spiritual, a spiritual holocaust. When the yeshiva world saw his success, Reb Shraga Feivel Mendelovitz said, if the Rebbe can do it outside of New York, we can do it bigger and we can do it better. And he started the movement called Teir Maseda, and true to his word, they were bigger and in some cases even better than the Rebbe's own um, network. But it was the Rebbe's example, the Rebbe's dynamic self-sacrifice and devotion to the Jewish child's education that caused the emergence of Torah Masora to do what the Rebbe started. In a similar vein today, everybody knows Chabad was a major force in Jewish outreach. And today there are numerous good organizations that do wonderful things in Jewish outreach. And 
part of the reason why they started is because Chabad was successful. And they want to be bigger and they want to be better. And God bless their works. So the Friedrich Rebbe was focused on Jewish education, saving Jews spiritually. He also set up organizations saving adults, and giving adult education, and so on and so forth. Rabbi Aaron Cutler, when he came to this country, was devoted to the yeshiva world, and re-establishing the yeshiva world of Europe in America. And in truth, it's bigger and better than it ever was in Europe. There are more yeshiva students today senior yeshiva boys and kola the Yugalite today far outnumber those that were in Europe in Lita, Poland, Hungary in those years of the great giants of Reb Baruch Ber, of Shimon Shkop Reb Chaim Moizer, those giants of Torah had only about 5,000 students altogether in the system and today it's many times that one estimate in Israel alone is 50,000 students. So, what can I say? And what do I want to say? Dr. Zurif is correct in his perspective. But we must understand that G'dayli Yisrael had their perspective. While it might be true that Rabbi Aaron Kotler diverted some of the funds to printing Sfarim, but he saw it was necessary to have those for him because the Torah is the lifeblood of Israel. The previous Lubavitcher Rebbe focused on educating the young, setting up yeshivas, setting up Mesiba Shabbos, publicizing la'alta l'tshuva, la'alta l'gula, that Jews have to do tshuva. And he was successful as well in bringing that message to tens of thousands of people. The G'daylim of the previous generations had their principles. And those principles were based upon how they received from their holy teachers. And while each person is frail and we can make mistakes, nonetheless, the principles have to be learned from. The lifeblood of the Jewish people is the Torah. And if there is Torah, there can be a Jewish people and we can save people physically. And so, although we wonder why certain things happened, what we have to remember is these people were greater than ourselves. And we really have to give them the benefit of the doubt. Have a wonderful day.